Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Mark Killian. As you know, I'm the director of the Arizona Department of Agriculture. And we're out on the road today. We're down in Benson, Arizona at Top Knot Farms with our good friend here, Michael. And he's going to uh, talk to us a little about what he does with his uh, farming operation. As you know, in Arizona, we have large farms, small farms, medium-sized farms. And Michael's part of that millennial generation that's doing uh, what I call entrepreneurial agriculture. So Michael, tell us a little about your operation and what made you decide to get in the chicken and duck business. Sure, well, thank you very much for coming to talk to me today, Mark. Um, it's my pleasure to share the story of uh, Top Knot Farms. Um, my brother and my father and my family started this farm three years ago. Uh, we came to Benson, Arizona and started doing this um, out here. We sell pastured poultry, uh, meaning that we're growing birds outside on grass and um, we supplement a grain ration that they're fed with uh, fresh pasture grass. They get clover and seeds and bugs and um, some things that improve the diet of a chicken and we feel make um, make the quality of the meat a little bit better than uh, birds raised strictly on grain. So what made you decide to want to do this? Sure. Um, we started doing this about four years ago because my brother and I were looking for fresh poultry in Arizona. Um, some of the more exotic things, fresh duck, fresh chicken, fresh quail, and we couldn't find it. And that was a little bit discouraging for us. And so we started raising small groups in our backyard in Tucson. Mm. Um, you know, we played with it a little bit for a, a year or two, and uh, we realized that we were able to grow some pretty good birds, and we shared with friends and family and, and uh, chef friends that were working in restaurants in Tucson at the time, and um, everybody really liked what we were doing. My father's uh, background is uh, in agriculture. He's a general manager for a large farm that grows lettuce and watermelon in Yuma, Arizona. Um, and so his background is in business management. He's uh, the general manager of the farm there. And um, we kind of just decided that there might be a market for uh, what we're doing. We learned that there are not a whole lot of people in Arizona doing what we're doing or doing exactly what we were wanting to do. And uh, so as a family, we decided to kind of take a gamble and see if we could make it work. And you see a lot of millennials, instead of doing office jobs and working in places, are coming out and doing farm jobs. Sure. So is that kind of what made you interested in doing this? You didn't want to have an office job, but you wanted to do agriculture? I suppose uh, a little bit in that way. Um, before I was farming, I was working as a chef in kitchens. So really? So um, I've never had a nine to five office job. I've okay. always um, kind of had something working that's a little bit different. but. Um, once you get a taste of being outside and um, being in nature, working with the ground, watching things grow, um, you know, I can say to myself personally, I'm hooked. It's, it's pretty incredible to be out here, um, you know, breathing fresh air, watching grass grow, taking care of birds. Um, it's, it's amazing. It's what the agricultural life's all about. Absolutely. So tell us what's going on here. What, what, do, you, what do you have going sure. on here? Explain that to us. Sure. Uh, right now we're standing in what we call our brooder house and um, it's essentially a barn that our day-old chicks uh, come to when they first arrive to the farm. It's an area that we're able to protect them from the elements, we protect them from predators. They live in uh, a very controlled environment. We're able to keep them warm, dry, and uh, safe from anything that we want to get to them. And so these birds are at various ages. We have a group here to the left of the camera that um, were born this week. They're about three days old. And the group that we're looking at here in front of us is uh, three weeks old right now. So all of our birds will spend the first four or five weeks of their lives in this building, just depending on what's going on outside. If the weather's nice, they can go out a bit earlier. If it's nasty outside, they'll stay a bit longer. But um, they spend about the first four or five weeks of their lives in this uh, controlled environment. At five weeks of age, they'll go outside and they'll finish the rest of their lives outside um, the way that a natural chicken would. They're on grass, they get rain, they get sunshine, they get bugs. Um, and the birds will grow to their table weight outside and then we harvest them and uh, they're distributed. So explain to people what these red 
bulls are and, and your brooder lights, explain all of that. Sure, sure. So it's a, a very basic setup. Um, we have the birds on wood shavings, which keeps their um, living environment clean. The uh, hanging bells that you see, the red bells, are waters that are set up on uh, a low pressure irrigation system. So they have fresh water um, to drink. And the way these bell waters work as, um, as they get lighter, as birds drink the water, they will automatically refill. They're on a float valve. Um, the metallic tents have heat lamps inside. Uh, and they provide a warm space for the birds to go when the temperature drops or when they need to warm up. Um, the broiler that we grow is called a Cobb 500, and it is uh, a Cornish crossbird. And this particular bird is um, bred and engineered to grow quickly, and it's also um, favored because it has a wonderful feed conversion rate, which means that it puts on a lot of meat per amount of feed that you give the bird. So um, they grow quickly and they grow large. Customers that buy from us at restaurants and um, our friends at the farmer's markets um, are buying our birds because they're looking for an alternative to um, poultry that's produced commercially. Um, I think it makes them feel good to know that we're raising the birds in a natural way, um, that the birds are getting a diet that the customers are agreeable to, they're getting uh, a non-GMO grain as well as fresh grass. Um, I think that people are growing more and more conscious about um, the food that their food eats and um, they care about that, um, that aspect of what we're doing out here. I think that's very attractive to them. Let's, Michael, let's go out here and look at your grass and why don't you explain what, what the process is out here on the grass and why this is important to your operation. Sure. So the reason that we like to put our birds on the pasture grass is because it increases the amount of natural or more natural food that they would get. Um, they do eat the grass. Um, chickens don't, don't digest it, but they will get seeds and bugs, and um, there are some other small things that are planted out here at Clover. We've planted some alfalfa throughout, and um, studies have suggested that um, leaves like that will increase the omega-3s in the bird and potentially uh, create a healthier meat for humans to consume. Um, and so that's why we like to offer the, the pasture grass to the birds that we're growing. What normal chickens do when they're out in the chicken yard, they'll go out and eat bugs and dirt and worms and whatever they can scratch up. Right. The chicken naturally likes to scratch and, and that's part of their behavior. Right. Now I see you've got a whole bunch of ducks over there. Let's go over there and find out about your duck operation. What, what's going on over there? All these ducks here. Tell, tell us what you're doing with all these ducks. Sure. These ducks are the pride of our farm. Um, we love growing the ducks because we love the way they taste, and uh, we do pretty well selling them to restaurants in Tucson and Phoenix. The breed that we grow is the Gramad Hybrid, and um, similarly to the Cornish Cross chickens that we grow, this particular breed of duck um, grows quickly and um, puts on a good amount of breast meat. Uh, per feed given to the bird and um, so we like them a lot they're a great bird so what are they from originally from the Peking ducks or how do they what did they cross to get these they are um, I know that the genetics are a Peking duck breed and I believe it's just um, the Gramad name is uh, because of, of a specific grower uh, possibly in France that just worked with genetics and perfected a, a good strain of duck, but um, the birds, the duck that we grow, are of the of the Pekin bloodlines. Entrepreneurial agriculture is extremely important today. In fact, 
One of the issues our department is dealing with is food insecurity. And we're finding that there's a lot of young farmers like yourself who are interested in doing things like this because they can provide food for folks. Uh, and it's an alternative to major production agriculture. So we tell people all agriculture is good. It's all good. There's all a role for every bit of it. And I think you're fitting a role here that's really important. And I think you're a trailblazer for a lot of young agriculture people today. And we sure. want to commend you for that. Sure. Well, thank you very much for coming in and uh, spending time with me today, Mark. It was my pleasure to tell my story. And, um, you know, I hope to, to see agriculture and small business agriculture continue to grow and flourish in Arizona. We want to commend you for that. And we appreciate the opportunity to be here on your farm today. Sure. We wish you a lot of success. And I'm going to be back here in November sure. to get a, a sure. Christmas goose. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Thank Mark. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.